Good evening. I'm calling to order the meeting of the Arlington Select Board for Monday, December 6th, 2021. This is Select Board Chair Steve DeCourcy. Permit me to confirm that all members and persons anticipated on the agenda are present and can hear me. Members, when I call your name, please respond in the affirmative. Diane Mahan? Yes, thank you. John Hurd? Yes. Len Diggins? Yes. Eric Helmuth? Yes. Eric Helman? Yes. Okay, thank you. Uh, staff, when I call your name, please respond in the affirmative. Sandy Pooler? Yes. Doug Heim? Yes, thank you. And Board Administrator Ashley Marr is participating remotely. Tonight's meeting of the Arlington Select Board is being conducted remotely, consistent with an act signed into law on June 16th, 2021, that extends certain COVID-19 measures adopted during the state of emergency. The act includes an extension until April 1, 2022 of the remote meeting provisions of Governor Baker's March 12th, 2020 executive order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law. The governor's order, which is referenced with agenda materials on the town's website for this meeting, allows public bodies to meet entirely remotely so long as reasonable public access is afforded so that the public can follow along with the deliberations of the meeting. Before we begin, permit me to offer a few notes. First, this meeting is being conducted via Zoom, is being recorded, and is also being simultaneously broadcast on ACMI. Persons wishing to join the meeting by Zoom may find information on how to do so on the town's website. Persons participating by Zoom are reminded that they may be visible to others and that if you wish to participate, you are asked to provide your full name in the interest of developing a record of the meeting. All participants are advised that people may be listening who do not provide comment, and those persons are not required to identify themselves. Both Zoom participants and persons watching on ACMI can follow the posted agenda materials also found on the town's website using the Novus Agenda platform. Finally, each vote tonight will be taken by roll call. We have six items and an executive session on our agenda. Let's see how much of the town's business we can get done tonight. Before I turn to the consent agenda, I just wanna note that our town manager, Adam Chapdelaine, is not with us tonight. Uh, he is participating with the Minuteman School Committee. He's actually on the new superintendent search committee. They have several interviews. One of them was scheduled for tonight and in the interest of continuity and for him being able to participate in the uh, deliberations on recommendations to the whole Minuteman School Committee he is attending that meeting tonight. We're happy to have our deputy town manager, Sandy Pooler, with us this evening. Um, so I now, now we'll turn to items two and three. They are on the consent agenda. Item two, minutes of meeting, November 22, 2021, and November 29, 2021. Item three is a vote for chapter 268A, section 20B3 certification for David Jera. Um, and I will turn to the board on the consent agenda items and uh, start with Mrs. Mahan. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I'd like to move approval. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Hurd? Second. Mr. Diggins? No comment except to say, like, as last year, I hope Mr. Um, Jared does not need all 500 hours. <laughs> That's right. Uh, and, and Mr. Helman? I'll second Mr. Diggins' sentiments. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Great. And I, I have no comment. So on a motion by Mrs. Mahan, seconded by Mr. Hurd, Attorney Hyde. Hurd? Yes. Mr. Diggins? Yes. Mr. Hellman? Yes. Mrs. Mahan? Yes, thank you. Mr. DeCourcy? Yes. It's unanimous vote. Okay. Uh, second item tonight is open forum. And I know that last month we got to open forum at about 1030. Tonight we're doing a lot better. <laughs> Uh, except in unusual circumstances, any matter presented for consideration of the board shall neither be acted upon nor a decision made the night of the presentation in accordance with the policy under which the open forum was established. It should be noted that there is a three minute time limit to present a concern or request. Um, we are at the beginning of the meeting. I don't know if there's any hands that have been raised, Mr. Pooler, for open forum. There's one hand raised, John Leone. Okay. I will allow him in. Mr. 
Mr. Leone, you should be in this meeting by now. Hey, good evening, Mr. Leone. Good evening. If you hear me, give me a thumbs up or something. Yep, all right. I'm here this evening. I know you have received my correspondence on the correspondence received. Usually one doesn't get to speak, so I'm kind of going around the rules a little bit and speaking on behalf of the building owner, Richard Megaditchian of um, 635 Mass Ave. Richard wants me to let the board know that um, he's owned that building for 40 years and paying taxes to the town of Arlington. Currently his tax bill is $39,300 per year. Um, Richard maintains that building, maintains the sidewalks around it, and shovels the sidewalk. Where the bike, blue bike rack has been moved to is I wish you will all take a very hard look at the uh, photographs that I sent you and my correspondence. It is a public nuisance in that it's in the way of people trying to traverse that stretch of sidewalk. When the snow comes, Mr. Megaditchin's not gonna really be able to clear that stretch of sidewalk as he has done for the last 40 years. Where the bike rack is put is a depression in the sidewalk and it turns into a sheet of ice. We were in the past able to navigate around that puddle, but with the bike rack where it is, we're not gonna be able to. And that section of this walkway is always heavily trafficked by the folks that live in the Winslow Tower going to Mass Ave. So they walk that section that he has cleared in the winter time as well. I've given two other photographs where the bike rack could be moved to. We did meet with uh, a nice gentleman from the planning department whose name I now remember, forget. Dan, I believe, and he said that he was going to be getting back to us and didn't, and the bike rack moved. Richard Megaditchin is um, epilep epileptic, is that the word? He is pretty angry that it got moved, and he really wishes that the board would reopen the hearing on this matter so that he and I can come down and speak to you in person, and that a better result would be at the Bike rack just got moved to the other, one of the other two locations, both of which would fit the rack and would make it a safer area for the town. And that's all I really want to say, because I know you can't vote on it and you don't, won't give us any comments. So thank you very much for hearing me out. Thank you, Mr. Leone. Thank you, Mr. DeCourcy. Thank you, members of the board. Thank you, Mr. Cooler. Good job. Okay, is there anybody else who wishes to speak for open forum? Okay, thank you, Mr. Pooler. That concludes open forum tonight. Item four, under traffic rules and orders, other business, discussion and endorsement, opera investment in parks and open spaces, proposed expenditures plan. Um, this will be Mr. Pooler and uh, Joseph Connolly, the director of recreation. And allowing Mr. Connolly into the meeting and he will uh, go forward with the presentation. Hi, everybody. Can you hear me? Yes. Good evening, Mr. Connolly. Hi, how are you? Um, so, uh, you know, as you all know, um, investing in our parks and open spaces is eligible for opera funding. And um, what uh, I'm proposing is really a certainly a once in a lifetime opportunity to get our some of our playgrounds um, up to a safe and um, usable standard. Um, as some of you might know, back in 2019, the town did a uh, playground audit and the results of those audits came back with the number of our playgrounds being classified as a um, level one uh, hazard, which um, has certain criteria, which could be uh, certain items could be life threatening in the playground. And that could certainly be as simple as just have not having enough surfacing but could also be some more serious issues with some of the playground equipment having um, entrapment and entanglement issues. Um, at that time, uh, the Department of Public Works and uh, Robert Jefferson um, made a point to go out and repair um, to the best of their ability and make safe, make safe and usable those playgrounds that had um, certainly those level one items. Uh, recently this fall, we conducted a round of safety audits. Um, we hired an outside playground inspector 
And those results came back with us having to close a number of our playgrounds, um, including um, at least two of our school playgrounds being uh, Pierce temporarily, uh, Stratton continues to be closed, and Bishop had to have one of the playgrounds, the as we refer to it as the old red playground behind the backstop, actually um, removed. A number of other playgrounds around town were temporarily fenced off until Department of Public Works, so we could contract out and get those repairs made. Um, and I think we're in just a situation where we just have playgrounds that are aging out. Um, playgrounds have about a you know, 15 year lifespan. Um, the playgrounds and certainly my day when they were just you know, uh, these metal structures would last a lot longer. But now the playgrounds are uh, very complex and um, they you know, have plastic components and they all have their you know, the separate intricacies, which quite frankly, don't make them quite last as long. Um, so uh, with all that said, in the 2019, in the latest um, safety audits, I think that we could make a significant um, improvement and um, quite frankly, get a number of our playgrounds up to a usable safe standard um, with the use of this funding. Uh, I think certainly Pierce, um, Pierce School, um, Bishop School in Stratton, they are uh, really one, two, three in priority. And then um, looking at the report, we have approximately seven or eight playgrounds that would fit in this kind of phase one level of improvement. Um, based on uh, kind of recent capital improvements and based on our knowledge of having done this for quite a few years, you know, we were able to look at what these approximately may cost if we were to do all eight of these playgrounds in a phase one. If you were to look at um, like a small little pocket park, we're estimating those playgrounds approximately $400,000. Um, a schoolyard playground is approximately uh, $600,000, $650,000. And then certainly some of the larger playgrounds, which would be like a Robbins playground, um, uh, you know, they may be more around $900,000. So um, looking at those estimates, um, I think in this first round of phase one improvements, you know, you'd be looking at approximately $4 million to um, get us through this list of seven to eight. A lot of that will come down to the bid cycle. Um, as we all know, costs are continuing to escalate. Um, so, you know, certainly a lot of this is to be determined based on, you know, how we do on the bids, but I think we could at least get through quite a few of these top level uh, one priority playgrounds. With, um, with the use of this opera funding. Great, Th thank you, Mr. Connolly. I don't know, Mr. Poole, if you wanted to add anything to that presentation or? No, I think he pretty much covered it. Either of us would be oh. happy to answer questions. Okay, great, thank you. I'll start with the, I will turn to the board then. Uh, Mr. Hurd. So just so we're clear, are we looking for a motion to approve anything or is this a, a receipt? Uh, Mr. Ch uh, Chair, if I may. Yes, sure. Go ahead, Mr. Buller. Um, so in the memo that uh, Joe Connolly presented to you, there's a list of phase one projects. And tonight we would like the board's endorsement of going forward on those phase one projects listed in the memo. Okay. And that's the total of those projects is the $4 million? That is correct. And I don't have the original ARPA presentation but is that within the range of what was set aside for playgrounds? Okay. Yes. Sorry, then I'll, I'm happy to support investment in playgrounds. I did have a few people reaching out to me about the Bishop playground when, when that came out. And I know that there was safety reasons, but a lot of parents rely on their playgrounds to allow their kids to get out some energy. So. I think this is a really smart and well worth it investment for us and glad to be able to use the opera funds and it's glad to good to actually have to talking about opera funds starting to see some in action so i'll move approval. Thank, thank you, Mr heard uh, Mr Diggins. i'll be happy to, um, to second that and um, just um, for a comment is first that even before the pandemic 
and I was hearing I mean, about the need to um, do uh, put some resources into our, our own playgrounds. And so I'm happy to see that. I mean, it's always enjoyable to walk past them and see the kids having fun, but also the parents getting together. It's a nice way for parents to meet and, and interact. Um, um, uh, but uh, uh, a couple of questions. Um, so what is the, what's gonna happen with the state's um, ARPA spending? Um, with respect to playgrounds, do you have any any sense? I know that the the bill is on the governor's desk. I mean, do we have a sense of anything that's going to um, any monies that are going to perhaps go to playgrounds from that budget or from that expenditure? Mr. Puller, there is a two hundred and fifty thousand dollars designated uh, for the town of Arlington uh, for playground improvements uh, in that bill, and I think it is likely that what we'll do is use that money for the design portion of some of these playgrounds and then use the ARPA money for the actual construction. Great, okay, thank you, thank you. And, and just a, a, a curiosity question on, on um, the phase two one for, for Thompson, it, um, it's eight years old, um, it wasn't reviewed and um, it wasn't inspected. Uh, I mean, I'm fine with, with approving it, but I'm just kind of curious as to why it was neither uh, reviewed in 2019 or inspected in 2021. Sure. So um, the because that is a school property playground, and um, we originally looked at just um, playgrounds that are under park commission jurisdiction. But um, I did get together um, with uh, uh, the um, assistant superintendent, and we walked many of the school playgrounds and town playgrounds that are adjacent to schools. And I will tell you the the pl playground adjacent to the school, the as you call it, the probably more the taught playground, because as you know, we just did the North Union playground over, which the school probably has their main use for. Um, it needs a lot of work, um, so that's why it was added into into the existing plan. All right. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. I appreciate all your work and the and the the um, the commission's work. You uh, know, thank you. Let's go. Thank you, Mr. Diggins. Uh, Mr. Helmuth. Thank you. Of course, I'll, I'll support this. And, um, you know, I, I'm glad this is an upper category and I'm glad that the, the uh, town is jumping on this. Uh, this really is a public health investment that playgrounds and open space are good for the health of our children for exercise, but also just as a healthy alternative place to gather as we have learned in, in the pandemic that you know, outdoors is, is valuable and making those spaces safe and inviting is it's a really good public health strategy on top of all the other uh, benefits. And we do have such a longstanding backlog and need. So this is, this is a real opportunity. And uh, Mr. Connolly, we are thrilled to have you back um, as in a, leading the recreation team, you and the Park and Recreation Commission and your staff do an incredible job. Uh, I think you, your work represents a uh, tremendous value for the town. Um, and I wanted to take the opportunity to, to thank you for that and thank you for thinking this through. And I'm delighted that you're at the helm for this really exciting uh, set of projects that we were able to undertake. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate that. Thank you, Mr. Helmuth. Uh, Mrs. Mahan. Okay, I'm trying to think which one I'm going to go with first. Um, uh, first, I just want to clarify something that, that I'll bring up under new business, but um, this is a vote before the board to endorse what the manager has recommended, but ultimately I'd like to ask town council, our vote is an endorsement or a recommendation that is not binding to the town manager. Ultimately, he has the final decision on how to spend these opera funds. Attorney Hines. That, that's my understanding. Um, I mean, I think the manager has, well, actually, Ms. Mahan, I'm, I'm not, I, I think that you approved a larger um, sort of appropriation scheme uh, and that the manager is making more specific decisions within those numbers. Mr. Pooler, do, do I have that correct? Yes, I, I believe that is correct. Well, I, I, think, I, I would actually say that under the U.S. Treasury Federal Opera funding of opera monies, um, the only role that the select board has is to vote, to approve, to accept the monies under the Opera Act through the U.S. Treasury. Am I correct, uh, uh, 
Attorney Heim or uh, our Deputy Town Manager? I believe that it is the board's role to allow uh, a manager to accept those funds. That is the vote that you previously took. Um, and now we are in a more internal political process of having the board's input and conversation about how those things move forward. Okay, and I'm, I'm only laying the groundwork for this for my new business later on when we get to it, it which is the only role that the select board has is to accept um, the opera funding from the federal government. Um, the town manager can ask for recommendations or endorsements, but ultimately it's his decision on how to spend something. So if this board takes a vote to recommend or endorse, it does not mean that the town manager is bound to do that. Am I uh, correct on that, Attorney Heim or uh, Mr. Pooler? Mr. Pooler, would you like me to? Ms. Pana, I'm sorry, I think I understand uh, your, your, your point. Yes, I mean, uh, generally speaking, the, the, it, it's a little bit different than CDBG funding. Um, you know, there's been an internal decision made how to um, sort of block off different pieces of these funds, but ultimately the manager is deciding how to expend these grants in terms of individual contracts, which he has the authority to enter for say a, a playground project. The specific project doesn't have to come back to the board to, to enter into a contract and to pay for it. Does that, is that, is that consistent with what I think your point is, Mrs. Vaughn? It definitely is. And I only say to my colleagues, the reason I say that is when I speak on the new business, it's going to be on uh, the $4 million for pre essential workers premium pay that we recommended to the town manager. He is not bound to that. And I'll, I'll have further conversations on that under new business. But I, I just wanted to make clear the point that, you know, we're taking these votes and the town manager and tonight through the deputy town manager is asking us to endorse and support, um, which is all well and good. But in terms of opera funding, our role ended when our only legal role was to accept the money and transfer that issuance power uh, to the town manager. Um, and then um, I am thrilled to have our uh, recreational director, Joe Conley, back at the helm um kind of guiding everything that that we're going along uh since he's here and he, he's sort of a captive captured audience i just wanted to bring up um and if he doesn't have any response tonight that's fine because this is kind of cold call on this um i've heard from some rider street neighbors in terms of the town's compost department um and some issues around that if that could be tightened up or go somewhere else um uh, in terms of how that, that program's going. I, I don't know if Joe Conley is really well versed on that, but there, there have been some neighbors that have called me from the Ryder Street area that uh, really have some concerns around that. So I guess I would ask Joe if I could through the chair um, in terms of the, which is a far field from the agenda item. So maybe one or two sentences to that and maybe the sentences you'll look into it, but there's been some concern with, I've been told that the compost effort um, is sort of located behind uh, the skating rink. Uh, Mr. Connolly, I don't know if you, you have a, an answer for that. Yeah, right no, now. The, okay, that's the problem. Sure, go ahead. Yeah, so certainly, I, I mean, one of the first things I did when I got back was do a walk around with one of the residents um, of the area. And that certainly came up as a, um, uh, discussion of potential concern. And so I will uh, continue to look into that. I, I, to be honest with you, Diane, I'm not even sure who, who put it in or whether that was something through um, Charlotte Milan's office, but I will look into that and um, we'll see if we can get some of those concerns addressed. I believe the, the concerns centered around rats and odor, um, but I will, I will certainly um, continue to look into that. And I'll call you tomorrow with a resident's name and okay. maybe you follow up with that person and we don't have to, you know, yeah. it'll get resolved and we don't have to discuss it, this at a meeting again. Absolutely. Thank you, Joe. Thank you, Mrs. Mahan. Um, yeah, and I also want to echo comments of the other members. Um, we haven't had a chance 
to, to have Mr. Connolly before us um, since he came back. And it's, it's great to have him back. Before I was on the board, I was involved through my kids with uh, different recreation programs and, and um, saw firsthand the outstanding job that uh, Mr. Connolly did and, and is currently doing in, in trying circumstances and, and really expanding programs, finding new ways to deliver services. So we're really grateful for all the work that you do, Mr. Connolly. Thanks, Steve. Sure. And just a clarification on the, the phase one items here, maybe this question for Mr. Pooler. I don't think any of these playgrounds are already in the capital, uh, the, the, the capital plan or have been identified for funding through the um, Community Preservation Act. Is that right? I can, um, I can answer that if you okay. want. Okay, sure. Um, so um, no, the, the only one that is up for discussion um, through CPA is Robbins Farm, um, which is in, in a phase one. However, uh, although you know we certainly haven't had our final conversation with the CPA, initial indication is that they most likely will not be able to fund the, um, the entire request. And that is why I included it into, into this potential request to maybe split the funding. Okay, all right. And, and I think you know, that, that the town manager through in his framework did set aside $4 million for investments in park and open space. This clearly is a desperate need to, to get some of these playgrounds done. So I, I will um, support the endorsement motion um, as well on this. And, and again, thank you, Mr. Connolly for the presentation tonight. Um, so on a motion to endorse by Mr. Hurd, seconded by Mr. Diggins, mm -hmm. Attorney Heim. Mr. Hurd. Yes. Mr. Diggins. Yes. Mr. Helmet. Yes. Mrs. Mahan. Yes, thank you. Mr. DeCourcy. Yes. Yeah, it looks like we have some visitors uh, in front of the select board office tonight. Uh, but uh, th th thank you. Sorry Mr. about that. No, don't worry about it. <laughs> um, that concludes item four. Thank you for joining us, Mr. Connolly. I will now move to item five uh, for approval. Declaration of Trust for the Arlington Affordable Housing Trust Fund, Kelly Linema, Assistant Director, Department of Planning and Community Development, and Karen Kelleher, the Chair of the Affordable Housing Trust Fund. And I just, um, before I introduce Ms. Kelleher and recognize uh, Ms. Linema too, um, this is this follows from our earlier vote uh, earlier this year where we um, approved the trustees to the Affordable Housing Trust Fund. Um, title two of our bylaws uh, states that a declaration of trust needs to be approved by the select board and then recorded at the Middlesex Registry of Deeds. And that's what they're here before us tonight. So I will turn to, I, I believe Ms. Kelleher is going to start the presentation. So I will uh, begin with her. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Can you uh, wait? Yes, I can. Me? Good. Great. Yep. Can you hear me? Thank you. Um, yeah, this is really relatively administrative. The declaration of trust, I would say, is about 85% verbatim from the bylaw that was approved by town meeting. It was prepared by staff uh, in consultation with town council, and we discussed it at our second meeting of the um, Affordable Housing Trust Fund recently. The, the additional language in here is mostly administrative, some mechanics of officer elections and timing, um, some process for terminating the trust at some point in the hopefully very distant future and, and for trustees to resign. There's some boilerplate uh, regarding governance and construction of the trust language and limitation of liability, but it's relatively administrative, the additional language. So um, that's what we are offering for your approval this evening. Um, and it would then be recorded with the registry as indicated. Kelly, did okay. you want to add anything? Um, sure, I can add. Um, so as, as Karen mentioned, this is um, the Declaration of Trust. It, it must align with the bylaw. And so that's what we've done in pretty much most cases. Um, there are areas that could be updated by the trust in the future if certain things aren't working, but mainly like removal of members or um, number of meetings, et cetera. But again, that's largely, largely administrative. Um, if the trust determined a year now, a year or so from now that certain adjustments needed to be made concordant with the bylaw, we would bring that, the trust would vote on that and we would bring that before you again for review and approval. Um, 
If there were any more substantive changes that needed, uh, that had to be changed in the bylaw, obviously that would have to go before town meeting. Um, so it's really, um, as Karen mentioned, it's an administrative document. Um, the next major step for the trust is the development of the action plan. And that will actually guide the, for the trust for several years of operations. It's gonna set forth the goals and priorities and initiatives that the trust will pursue before advancing its purpose of preserving and creating low and moderate income housing for individuals and families. So they will be discussing the, uh, the action plan at their next meeting. Um, but before they do that, we really wanted to get this document before you for administrative review and approval. Great. Thank, thank you, Ms. Lyman. And I will uh, now turn to the board and I'll start with the board's, uh, the trustee from the select board, uh, Mr. Helmut. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Ms. Kelleher and Ms. Linema. Uh, yeah, it is my privilege to represent the select board as a uh, Arlington Affordable Housing Trust trustee. Uh, I, we've had two meetings so far. I have to say it is an exceptionally qualified and articulate group of people who are uh, committed to affordable housing, who are a lot smarter than I am on these issues, and Arlington is really, really lucky to have every single one of these members. So um, I want to thank them all for, for their service. And I'm very excited about uh, having a small part to play in developing that action plan. I think it's going to be a really good opportunity to, to think big, to think long-term. And, um, and uh, I would therefore uh, move approval for the select board's uh, endorsement and approval of the trust so we can get to work. Thank you, Mr. Helmuth. Uh, Mrs. Mahan. Thank, thank you, Mr. Chair. I would like to second Mr. Helmuth's motion. And I have two questions. Um, one on members um, and one on appointments. Uh, the, the first question I have is, I believe I'm correct, please correct me if I'm wrong, that the select board has six members that they can appoint. And of those six members, um, there are two members that are specifically uh, specified of who they will be. Uh, one is a uh, someone who resides in subsidized housing, um, as well as some other caveats who has knowledge of federal housing or, or um, demonstrates knowledge of, of tenant issues. And then the other one is um, a representative of local housing. I, I would like to hear from whomever um, exactly who, who those two appointees are. Are they really that wide open? Or is it someone that um, has affiliation with A, housing authority or housing corporation and B, someone who resides in subsidized housing or if it can be someone else. And then I have a follow-up question. Uh, Ms. Kelleher, I don't know if you can answer that. Certainly. Um, I think there are two trustees that uh, meet these qualifications, Mrs. Mahan. Um, Marianne Donovan is a tenant at Drake Village and is a representative of the housing authority. And then um, Neil Mongold is on the board of the Housing Corporation of Arlington, and he is also representing a local housing organization as such. And those both are very, very good candidates. So I'm, I'm kind of hearing that. So I, I'm, I'm okay th with that. And then I'm just uh, curious about the um, trustee um, staggered appointments of two years and one year with regard to the Board of Selectmen, um, what are you recommending in that regard? Because um, that kind of seems ambivalent to me and maybe I'm not reading the language provided correctly, but I see that there's uh, two proposed terms uh, not to exceed two years or one year. Yeah. Can someone explain that to me a little bit more? I'll give it my best shot. Um, I believe there are two trustees who have a one year term so that when that expires at the end of one year, and I, I believe I'm one of them, we will re, uh, potentially receive an, a, a new two-year term or our replacement would receive a new two-year term that would be staggered with the other 
five, if I'm correct. There's also the ex officio appointee of the town manager. Um, so we did um, have some discussion at our last meeting about the timing of those appointments. And I wanna refer to the um, declaration, but I believe, or Kelly, correct me if I get it wrong, but I believe what we decided was that we wanted to align the election of officers and those appointments all at the time of appointment at one year from the, from the initial appointment that occurred earlier this year. That is correct. And, and maybe that, last question on that, if I could ask Kelly or Karen, I know the board has six appointees um, that can be a one or two year term. If someone could, as briefly as possible, um, tell me of those six appointees that the select board has, what their term will be. I will, um, this is Kelly Lanema, Ms. Mrs. Mahan. Um, I will have to, re I'll have to come back to you with that specific, um, that specific information. Um, I will follow up immediately. Okay, thank you. And, and the only reason I asked that question is under the um, housing trust fund uh, explanation of the six select board appointees, I just wanna make sure we're all clear on um, our six appointees, they can be one or two year appointees. And I, I just wanna make sure that, especially for myself, as well as my colleagues, but definitely myself, um, because I haven't looked into it enough, um, who's a one year, who's a two year, so that the board, whoever the chair is, can kind of get the synchronicity of what needs to happen um, starting next year in year one, year two, and going forward from there. So my question would be, of the six select board appointees, um, in terms of their uh, length of service, who, how many are one year, how many are two year? So uh, I'll leave it, leave it to the chair and Ms. Lainema and Ms. Kelleher to kind of flush that out and we'll discuss that at a future board meeting. And thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mrs. Mahan. And, and I think when we appointed the trustees, we just appointed the six trustees. And that night we were aware who the ex officio member was but we didn't know about the term. So, so thank you for that question. And, and uh, we'll look forward to hearing from Ms. Linemar on, on that, the, the staggered terms that were created. Um, I, um, next is Mr. Hurd. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I'm happy to second that. Um, no questions. I've seen a few trusts in my life. Um, Attorney Heim, I, I will ask you, did you review this to make sure it doesn't violate the rule against perpetuities? 21 years plus a life of being? Well, the th three lawyers cringe as, as we hear that term. I'm a real estate lawyer and I still don't understand it, but um, no, I'm all joking aside. I'm happy to see this finally come to fruition and know that the, uh, that the trust has been meeting and moving this forward towards its goal. This has been something that's been coming down the pike for a few years. And I think it's something that is really important to the town that a lot of town residents have been looking forward to. And now it's good to go from design phase to implementation phase and start seeing the benefits of the trust. So happy to see what comes out of it. Thank, Thank you, Mr. You, Mr. Hurd. I, I still have nightmares about the rule against perpetuities, but uh, I uh, now we'll turn to Mr. Diggins. Thank you, Mr. Chair. You know, so. So yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing the action plan on this one. And I, I have to say, I hope in a few years, the money comes rolling in so quickly that you'll have to meet once a month instead of just uh, once a quarter. Uh, but uh, a quick question about uh, the, the length of term. So are the bylaws locked us into two years max? Um, that's to whomever, do you, Mr. Chair? Uh, I can answer that if sure. you Mr. Chair. Sure. Karen Kelleher. Um, yes, it's a max two-year term as set forth in the bylaw. Okay, that's all. Thank you very much. And uh, Mr. Diggins, we actually are meeting monthly um, because we're eager to get to work, um, though the bylaw only requires us to meet quarterly because at some point in the future, perhaps we won't need to meet that often. Oh, hopefully the money will come rolling in. You'll have to, like I said, meet at least once a month. There's just too much <laughs> money coming in. But, uh, so thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mr. Kelleher. Sure. Thank, thank you, Mr. Diggins. Yeah, and I also support the approval of the Declaration of Trust. I did want to thank Ms. Kelleher for her willingness to serve as chair and, and for being selected as chair of the Affordable Housing Trust Fund. When we had the trustees at our earlier meeting, we didn't, we didn't have an opportunity 
to recognize each member individually. So thank you for, for your for your dedication and your work. And, and thank you, Ms. Lanema, for the um, technical assistance that, that, that you're providing to the trust fund as well. So uh, on a motion by Mr. Helmuth, seconded by Mrs. Mahan for approval of the declaration of trust, Attorney Heim. Mr. Hurd. Sorry, I forgot Mr. Helmuth spoke first, so you can ignore my second. Aye. Yes. Mr. Diggins. Yes. Mr. Helmuth. Yes. Mrs. Mahan. Yes, thank you. Mr. DeCourcy. Yes. Gianna, let's vote. Great. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Have a good evening. Good night. You too. Uh, item six under correspondence received. We got a little preview of it earlier tonight. Uh, blue bikes rack and pedestrian safety at railroad parking lot, John D. Leone. Um, and I will turn to uh, Mr. Diggins. Uh I'd like to move acceptance, you know, uh, of the letter and, and and maybe discuss we how we deal with it, you know, if that's appropriate now. Um, well, I, I I think what we could do maybe is is remove it, receipt of the letter. Maybe we ask the town manager for a report at our next meeting on that. Okay, thank you. Uh, so yeah, I'll move yeah, with you. no, no, I I. I I, I think that there, there are some things, he's not here tonight, Mr. Amstutz isn't here. So I'd like to have an opportunity to hear from them, but I think it's certainly appropriate to um, try to resolve this issue as quickly as possible. Yes, and that's, that's really what I'm getting at. So, so that's the way we'll handle it. So I, I'm fine with that. So I was just really getting direction more than anything else. So I'm happy to move receipt. Okay, th th thank you, Mr. Diggins. Uh, Mr. Helmer. Thank you. I'd like to second that, and if I could uh, offer a, a friendly, uh, friendly amendment, perhaps to uh, move receipt and refer to the town manager, and ask for a uh, report at our at a future meeting, or perhaps okay. our next meeting if the chair prefers. It, it, yeah, is that acceptable, Mr. Diggins, for the, the, the amendment there? Yes, it is. Thank you very much. Mr. Okay. Hall. Sure. Okay, uh, Mrs. Mahan. Happy to support. No questions. Mr. Hurd. No questions. Yeah, and I'm happy to support this as well. Um, so on a motion for receipt and referral to the town manager made by Mr. Diggins, seconded by Mr. Helmuth, Attorney Hine. Mr. Hurd? Yes. Mr. Diggins? Yes. Mr. Helmuth? Yes. Mrs. Mahan? Yes, thank you. Mr. DeCourcy? Yes. Mr. Unanimous vote. Okay, thank you. Uh, next is new business. Uh, Attorney Hine? No new business. Okay, Mr. Pooler? No new business, thank you. Okay, Mr. Helmer. Uh, thank you. Um, you know, I would just like to to explain. I think my point of view of, about the board's role with ARPA, since um, you know, I think we we may be hearing some more about that, and I'm always happy to, happy to hear my my colleagues' views. You know, my understanding of the process is that whereas the the board's legal uh, role was to accept the funds. Uh, my experience of the process is that the town manager has been very transparent with us and has asked for clear top line approvals for categories um, and been very transparent about that. And we've taken votes and my expectation and my confidence is that the town manager would, would do what he says that he's gonna do and do what we have approved. Um, I think that there are levels of specificity and implementation that we do necessarily need to uh, leave to the town manager. Um, but speaking for myself, I think that it's healthy for the board to be engaged as we were earlier tonight. Uh, I think it's informative for the community, but I also really feel that um, you know, from an internal point of view, as we supervise the town manager, that if we, he comes to us with a proposal and we say yes to it, we take a vote to it, that that's what I would expect would happen. And I have total confidence um, that at the level that we are being asked to approve something, that that's what our town manager will do. I think he has a track record of doing that. So, um, you know, that's my view on this. I, I feel that we are playing a relevant role. Uh, I think the town manager is being straight with us. And, um, you know, I think that's just kind of where I sit with that. And I look forward to seeing uh, the process continue. Uh, with some really good investments in uh, all kinds of categories. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Helmut. Uh, Mr. Diggins. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Three quick things. Um, first, I was reelected re to my third term 
as the chair of the Regional Transportation Advisory Council. This happened back in um, early November, and I, I'm so thrilled about that. I've really enjoyed being chair of the organization and, and being on the board of the Boston MPO, the Metropolitan Planning Organization. And I'll say that I sit on that board with two other Arlingtonians, and Mr. Amson from Planning, who represents the, um, Arlington as the at-large um, town, uh, and one of the at-large towns, I mean, and, and, um, and Eric Barasa, uh, who is, um, I forget exact role at MAPC, but it's pretty high up there. He's the vice chair of the board. I mean, and and the deal with the um, the MPO is that it really is a regional entity. I mean, and and we all realize, I mean, that that um, this all the towns in this area I mean sink or swim together. I mean, and there's such camaraderie in the group. I mean, and and um, it's such a, a just an enjoyable group uh, to work with. So I'm happy to um, be the the chair of the advisory council and. The same goes for the advisory council. Uh, and the second thing is I had to leave uh, early last time to um, host, uh, well, quasi chair the first meeting of the youth and young adult um, study group or the study group to study whether we'll have a group need. And um, the the representative from the high school there uh, were just really a great bunch of kids. I mean, it's a really good group. I came out of that, me so energized, I was a little, I won't say demoralized, but let's just say frustrated by how long it took us to get to this first meeting. You know, uh, uh, but but we're there, and I think we're going to make really good progress. In, and and um, it's a great chance to collaborate with some more uh, people in town. And the third thing is that uh, the civic engagement group, along with um, Envision Arlington, is doing something a little new this time with respect to the, the, the annual town survey, and and we are going to um, um, offer. Collect questions. I mean, so anyone can submit a question um, through the, the the Google form. Uh, um, it came out in the town survey. Uh, I, if this was the right form, I'd throw a, a link into the chat. But but um, look at the, um, the um, one of the town emails. I mean, and you can submit a question, and we will uh, throw them all to Kelly Linema uh, and and Scott Lever Lever, uh, and and um, they'll choose a question that will go into. The town surveys so is a good way to, to get people thinking about the survey and maybe making playing a little role in the creation of it. So that's it. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mr. Diggins. Uh, Mr. Hurd. Um, I have some thoughts on ARPA, but I'm going to save them because I think we'll, we'll hear more. Um, the only thing that I want to bring up was now that we're about a month into the Appleton and Mass Ave implementation of our recommendations, I do drive through there all the time, and it does really seem to be making a big difference. We said this before that it's not this doesn't make it 100% safe. There's no way we can do that, but it is certainly a major improvement. I think it's slowing down a lot of vehicles going in and out of there. So, kudos to. I guess us <laughs> and everyone else that was involved and the, the the boards and the town staff and the architects that helped us out because I think that was a good result in a tough problem. And so it's good to see the implementation of some of the decisions we make right away and, and the how it affects people's lives. So um, that was it for me. Thank you, Mr. Hurd. Uh, Mrs. Mahan. Okay. Um... God bless you, Mr. Helmuth, uh, to, for being ride or die for the town manager on the APRA funding. Um, but I'm very sensitive about that. This is gonna be the fourth meeting that I'm gonna ask who the chair and the deputy town manager um, on premium pay for essential workers. This board took a vote to recommend $4 million. And Mr. Helmuth said, words to the effect of, I trust the manager to take our recommendations or anything else that that's what he's gonna do. Legally, the um, town manager does not have to take a recommendation of $4 million for premium pay for essential workers. Um, he can accept that as a recommendation, but that's not binding. Um, is that correct, Attorney Hein? or Mr. Po Deputy Town Manager. Um, I think it, it is not legally binding, but it is what he's doing. I disagree. 
And I've asked, this is going to be the fourth meeting. And I asked after this meeting that I actually get this. I have asked through the chair from the town manager that he provide the formula that he is using with our town unions, not our M schedule employees that we've already tacked away hybrid remote working as of August, no, no issue with that. I would like to see the formula that the town manager is using on how he anticipates expending the board's recommendation, which is not binding. Please someone correct me if that's wrong. I would love it to be binding, but I don't think it is. The $4 million that this board recommended, I would like to see the formula that the town manager is using for town essential workers. It's a basic math equation so that I can get myself and my colleagues can get that mathematical formula and plug in the numbers and see if it adds up to 4 million or if it adds up to 2 million, which I think is probably more the case. Um, so I really want that by the next meeting. I'm very frustrated that this is the fourth time that I'm asking for this. I understand that the town manager can, can say the board made a recommendation and I'm not bound by that. And I accept that because that's the law under, under the opera funding and US treasury funds. Um, but this board um, led by Mr. Hurd and others have, had recommended and the town manager said he accepted 4 million for our town. I'm not talking about residents, which was another 500,000 for essential workers. Uh, the board recommended and the town manager said he accepted $4 million going to our town essential workers for premium pay. I don't believe that's the case. I would like to see, once again, it's a simple formula. Just give me what it is the town manager, because it's ultimately his decision, how he's going to apply that funding. And then we can all plug in the numbers and see if it adds up to the recommended vote of the select board of $4 million which I don't think it does, or if, it, if, or if it adds up to what the town manager really wanted to do from the beginning, which is 2 million. So I really want that by the next meeting. I'm, I'm, I'm really upset about that. And I, I see the deputy town manager has a stand up. If I could through you, Mr. Chair, unless the chair has something else he'd like to add first. No, I, I, did, did you have your hand up, Mr. Puller? Or, 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 go, go, go right ahead. Did you want to say anything else, Mrs. Mahan, before? The, or? Uh, maybe in, in response to what Mr. Okay. the deputy town manager might say. Okay, Mr. Puller. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mrs. Mahan and other members of the board. Um, I doubt that you will have the formula by next meeting because we are going through the process of meeting individually with the unions. Uh, we have had some of those meetings already. We have another one, another union coming up this Friday. Um, I am the person along with the HR director who sits in on those meetings with the unions to describe our general bargaining strategy and our ARPA strategy. And I think it is essential that we have those discussions with all the unions first so they, uh, and we get their feedback and work through what sometimes can be uh, some excruciating detail um, however, I would also say uh, I can represent to the board that the numbers and the formulas we are discussing with those unions, I believe will add up to the $4 million that has been discussed. And that at the end, once we've concluded our conversations with the unions and present information to you, you will be able to see that too. Um, it, it before I turn back to Mrs. Mahan, Attorney Heim, you had your hand up. Did you want to add anything? I just wanted to add two things. Uh, number one, that I appreciate that uh, uh, Select Board Vice Chair Mahan is asking for uh, something for information on a new business. And I just want to make sure that that's clear to everybody that that's what's going on here. There's been, a re there's been some commentary about uh, something under new business for something that the board wants to discuss at a later date in the way that it perceives that. So I just want to put that out there. Second of all, I also just wanted for folks who maybe aren't as familiar with what's being discussed, just to make it clear that yes, uh, select board's role was to essentially accept um, the ARPA funding 
and town managers, as long as it's a town manager form of government, um, are the ones who are gonna administer these funds um, consistent with what um, they've sort of laid out. I, I think I hear and understand what everybody's sort of saying about this um, with respect to whether or not every piece of information that's been requested has been provided yet and you know whether or not and what the timeline is for that. So I just, I know we're under new business. So I just wanted to highlight for folks to make clear that we're talking about when and what the select board can expect in future meetings in terms of, of information with respect to RP. Okay, thank, thank you, you Mr. Chair. Okay, thank you, Attorney Heim. Uh, Mrs. Mahan, I don't think you've completed your new business. No, I didn't. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, um, first off, in Attorney Heim with the chair or the deputy town manager who sits in the labor negotiations, can correct me if I'm wrong, but to use opera funding along with collective bargaining, it's not appropriate, it's an unfair labor practice in the sense that opera funding is what it is. The board has made a recommendation of $4 million. I myself personally think the town manager only wants to spend 2 million and it's up to him if he decides to do that. But am I correct, Attorney Heim or Deputy Town Manager or anyone else that um, it is an unfair labor practice to tie opera funding to uh, collective bargaining negotiations. Mr. Pooler. I do not believe that it is an unfair labor practice. There certainly has not been any record of a ruling in that regard. Um, and uh, I would say at this point, we are having productive conversations with our unions they're moving forward and uh, I do not see a problem in those negotiations at this point. Okay, so can I ask the deputy town manager, so you are using opera funding um, as a tactic in collective bargaining negotiations, even though opera funding is federal and collective bargaining is municipal. What we have said is that we are not discussing ARPA funding as part of collective bargaining, but we are linking the two. So you are discussing it as a link? We are discussing them simultaneously, yes. So you are discussing it as a link? Yes, we would like to have- Okay, and, I, and I, think, I think that's illegal. I think that ARPA funding the board voted to accept the federal monies. The town manager said he'd like our recommendations and he would act upon them, which is $4 million. And I think that under collective bargaining, it should not be an issue that's being discussed in concert with it. And I think it is being discussed and it's not even close to what this board has voted. So I wanna say again, and I don't wanna say this at another meeting. I know this was said at the first meeting, I know Mr. Hurd asked for, I'm not gonna characterize what he asked for, but he did ask for um, some follow-up. I want the formula. I basically wanna know from the town manager, are you accepting the select board's recommendation, which is non-binding for 4 million of the 31 to $34 million to go to premium pay for town essential uh, workers, if that's being accepted, and if not, what that number is? Because I think it's $2 million. And, it, it, and if the deputy town manager wants to go on the record right now and say, no, it's $4 million, I'll accept that, and I don't need backup documentation. So will you say that? Yes, it is $4 million. For town essential right. workers? Yes. Okay. Pardon me if I, I'm, I don't trust that. And then my... No. Um, Pardon me, Mr. Chair. Yeah, I don't know what the usual practice here is on the board about people saying that they don't trust what other people have said, but I take that as a personal offense and I'd like to object to that. Okay, okay. thank you, Mr. Paul. I, I, and I think when the, when the figures come back, I mean, to, to be fair to Mr. Pooler and Mr. Chapterline, we don't know what they're coming back with. And so until they do, it, it's, it's unfair to speculate whether it's less a lesser amount or, or I know, amount. but I've been it, asking. The proof is in the pudding, though. This in is terms my of what they come fifth, back with. 
This is my fifth meeting that. that I've asked for the formula. Can I just get that? It's great that the deputy town manager says, yes, that's what we're offering. I don't believe that. Whatever's the nicest way for me to say that. I've asked since the get-go, I just want to see the formula. You give me the formula. I know the ultimate number is 4 million. I plug in the number of employees on the town side for essential workers. If it comes out close to 4 million, it's 3.7, 3.8, 3.5. I'll accept that, but I can't get that formula. So I want to get it by the next meeting. I, I've been dodged by that. I've been told, yes, that's what we're doing. I'm insulted by that. I want that formula. Is that really hard to give to me? Just give me what it is that the town, through the town manager, the deputy town manager, who's very offended by what I said. So I will, whatever way, apologize. Just give me that formula. It's $4 million. Give me what it is you're approximating you're going to offer. I can plug in the number of employees and I can see if that adds up to 4 million, which is what the town is saying through the town manager and deputy town manager, which I don't trust because what I'm hearing is it's more like 2 million. So can I get a commitment by the next meeting? I get that formula. I, I, I think the request has been made. I'll, I'll interrupt for a second, Mr. Pooler. And I think Mr. Pooler was unclear, unsure whether that would come back at the next meeting. The request has been made. It will be forwarded to Mr. Chapter I think there should be discussions between now and the next meeting in terms of the timing. But just like tonight, and again, I don't want to equate the two, but we set aside or accepted the framework of $4 million for parks and playgrounds. And tonight we got, here's how the money is going to be spent. I think at some point we're going to get something back from Mr. Chapdelaine and Mr. Pooler that this is how the $4 million in premium pay is going to be allocated, but they're not ready to do that yet. And maybe they'll be ready by December 20th. Maybe they won't, but the request is out there. I understand your frustration not getting that back, Mrs. Mahan, but I, I think we've got to allow them some time to complete that process and come back to us. But what did what you did hear from Mr. Pooler tonight is the number is 4 million and they'll come back. So I, your question has been received. It will be forwarded to Mr. Chaplain. Mr. Pooler heard it. I think that's all we can do for tonight through the new business segment. I don't. I want it back. I'm, I'm tired of getting stonewalled on this. Seriously, I'm a member of the board. I should be treated with that respect. We voted it six weeks ago. We were told at that meeting, I, I'm, I'm not going to characterize what Mr. Hurd asked for, but I know what I asked for. It's a very simple request. I want it by the next meeting. I don't want to hear... Because it's not a, 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 a collective bargaining negotiable, negotiable item. The board voted 4 million, which is only a recommendation, it's non-binding. The town manager said, oh yes, I'm gonna accept that. Then I wanna see the formula that adds up to 4 million. It has nothing to do with when he meets with whatever union. I know, I, I believe he's only met with one and he has the other ones to meet with. I just wanna see that. And I wanna be respected as a member of this board. Just give me that. <laughs> You know, we if the manager you gives me back, the board. you know what? I'm, I'm, the board voted four million. I'm only doing two. I, I don't accept. Oh yes, that's what we're doing, but we're negotiating it. There's no negotiation. The board recommended four. Did the manager accept that or not? That's what I want. Okay. Oh, thank you. And I know. Okay, I, I'm I'm just very frustrated. That's all. Oh my gosh. Okay. All right. Thank and you. I want that by the next meeting. And if the answer is. I'm going to continue to get stonewalled, then that's the answer I want to get. Um, the, the next thing I have, which I, I've spoken with the town manager about and the chair, is um, a request by a town meeting member, Arlington resident Kristen Anderson, which I understand the chair wants to talk to before it can be on the, the agenda. I would expect as a member of the board, I could get something on the agenda without having to back it up. But I'm going to respect the board's position that he needs to speak to. Um, Ms. Anderson, it has to do with the NIFTY's permit around the LY flooding and the CSO combined sewage overfall, overfalls, um, which is, is coming up. I'd like to see that in, on a future board agenda item. Um, I will respect the board's uh, request that he needs to speak to this Arlington resident and town meeting member. Um, a part of me would say, as a member of the board, I should be granted the courtesy to request uh, an item on, on the agenda that it should be on. But I, I'm going to honor that because once again, similar to uh, the premium pay issue, I, I will live by a different standard. 
Uh, I asked at the last board meeting if, if Ms. Pula could follow, Mr. Pula could follow up on. Um, I asked the town manager about um, future booster clinic um, uh, town hall schedules, if, if that will be happening, because I know we've had at least, I believe, 600 or 1800 people that were able, I think 1800 people that were able to take advantage of the first three clinics. If there will be future clinics, I have not heard back from the town manager. So if um, the deputy town manager could follow up on that. And then the other thing that I was very concerned about, but I know the chair has, uh, I believe already scheduled is a, a, a meeting of, of the long range planning committee. Um, perhaps if very briefly, uh, the chairman, if there has been a meeting scheduled, if we could just announce that and where we're going with that. Okay. Yeah, that, that meeting is going to take place on December 17th. Is, is that it for new business, Mrs. Mahan? Yes. Okay, thank you. I, I have a couple of items, but I do want to address one thing with, with Ms. Anderson. Mrs. Mahan and I did speak about that. I said that's a great idea. It should go on the agenda. Uh, Mrs. Mahan suggested that maybe it would be a good idea for me to talk to Ms. Anderson um, to learn more uh, about the issue before we put it on. And I, I certainly will do that and I'll put it on the, the agenda for December 20th. So this is, I totally heard Mrs. Mahan on that request. It will go on. I think we talked about it going on for one of the December meetings and it will go on for one of the meetings. So, um, it, and, and there will be a discussion between now and the 20th. Um, I did want to talk briefly about an event that I attended last Thursday for the Housing Corporation of Arlington. They had their opening of the Downing Square Broadway Initiative buildings. Uh, Mr. Helmuth uh, uh, was with me the, the, that day. I think Mr. Diggins may have been there through Zoom um, and uh, the town manager was there. And this was a 48 units of affordable housing that will be opening hopefully for tenants later this month, if not in, in January. 34 um, are up at Downing Square and 14 are on Broadway. In addition to um, creating affordable housing there is space, as people know, on the at the Broadway site for Arlington Eats, and there are also five of the 48 units that are being set aside for formerly homeless individuals through collaboration with the Greater Somerville uh, Homeless Coalition. So it was a a great event. The the project is is very impressive and just a real a long process that the Housing Corporation went through, and we're really happy as a community to see these um, see these units come online later this month. I contrast that with a decision that came out recently and was filed on the Mugar property. And I will have more to say about that on December 20th. The comprehensive permit was approved with conditions. It was filed at the clerk's office. And now we're in a period where either the applicant or the abutters can choose to appeal that decision. We won't know that until later in this month. Um, notwithstanding the approval, which I, th I think to uh, e each member of the ZBA did the best that they could given the limitations of Chapter 40B, I still have significant concerns as I believe most members of the board do with the um, proposed project. Um, I do wanna correct one item that was in the decision. There is a line item, paragraph 79 of the decision that states that the six duplex units at the site were brought back to the plan at the request of the select board. That That is not the case. The select board has consistently opposed this project. We brought up the duplex in the context of a what we believed was a material change to the project earlier this year. Unfortunately, that line made it into the, um, into the decision. It wasn't determinative of the decision, but I wanted to correct the record on that. Last thing I wanted to say, was that um, to ask for people's continued patience with JRM. Um, I know the town is working with them on the yard waste, which this is supposed to be the last week of yard waste. Um, we're a Monday date. I didn't expect my yard waste to be picked up today, but I did expect my trash to be picked up in our street. Um, all the barrels are still out for trash. So I think the town has said, don't contact JRM if your yard waste isn't picked up, but I think it's appropriate to contact them if your trash is. And so we'll hopefully be following up on that tomorrow. Um, My yard waste and, got uh, picked up today, just saying. Okay, good. Okay, that, 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 that's good. Somewhere that's all my, my, um, my new business. Uh, we will be moving on to an executive 
session, and I believe we will be coming out of that executive session only for purposes of adjournment. So I will read the three items in executive session and then ask for a motion from the board. Uh, the three items are A, to conduct a strategy session in preparation for contract negotiations with non-union personnel, the town manager, and or conduct contract negotiations with same. B, to comply with or act under the authority of any general or special law or federal grant and aid requirements, uh, approval of executive session minutes of November 1, 2021 and November 8, 2021, and C, to discuss the open meeting law complaint of Mr. Patrick Higgins, pursuant to Mass General Laws, Chapter 30A, Section 21A1. Um, do I have a motion for the executive session? Mr. Chair? Yes, Mrs. Mahan. Move that we um, go into an executive session to con conduct a strategy meet, uh, session in preparation for contract negotiations negotiations with non-union personnel, the town manager, and or conduct contract negotiations with said, as well as to comply with under the authority of any general special law or act the grant aid uh, requirements of the executive session uh, minutes of November 1st and November 8th, as well as to discuss the open meeting log complaint to Mr. Pas Patrick Higgins pursuant MGL chapter 30, chapter 38, section 21, a1, and when we come out of ex executive session, unless someone else advises me to, uh, differently, it will be to come out for the purposes to adjourn, adjourn. Thank you, Mrs. Mahan. Do we have a second? Second. Okay, on a motion by Mrs. Mahan, seconded by Mr. Hurd. Attorney Hein. Mr. Hurd? Yes. Mr. Diggins? Yes. Mr. Helmuth? Yes. Mrs. Mahan? Yes, thank you. Mr. DeCourcy. Yes. We're in executive session. Okay, great. That concludes the public portion of our meeting.